Hi y'all, today we are doing the author tube in the trenches tag. I was tagged by Adrian over at Strip Cover Lit, who is the original creator of this tag. Links in the description below. There are 10 questions, so let's get started. Number one, do you have a sweetheart novel slash short story slash poetry project? A project that turned you into a serious writer? feel like I'm getting called out here. So yes, uh, it's not exactly a secret, but I don't generally advertise it either. I do write under a pen name and have been for some time. I am Iron Man. Under that pen name I write, I, I call them my passion projects. These are books that I just want to write. With these passion projects, I really don't put a whole lot of effort into the marketing of the books because I really don't expect them to sell well. Uh, they tend to be more literary in nature. Now I know in the past I've talked about the difference between storytelling and literature and how I am a storyteller but there's still a lot of overlap between these two concepts and I certainly do appreciate what literature can do and I do have a love for it and I do have uh, a desire to at least explore that part of my talents. What? I can't have layers? Number two, do you or do you ever plan to work on a series long project? Yes, one of the passion projects I'm currently working on is a short trilogy. It's a, it's a romance. I'm very much a mood reader and that also translates into being a mood writer. So my primary project right now is my second novel which is the science fiction. But on the side when I get stuck with the science fiction or I just don't feel like writing the science fiction, uh, I do have a short trilogy that I've been playing with for a little while. Um, it's, a, it's a Viking romance, it's just something fun. I have no idea if I'll publish it or what name I'll publish it under. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a short trilogy and you know, I'm, I'm working on that. Number three, thoughts on mixed form projects, short stories that contain poems, novels that contain short stories, etc. I think this can be done well. It is difficult to do well. So this question gave me pause for a little bit because some of the examples I initially thought of didn't quite fit the question. For instance, Shakespeare was famous for switching between prose and poetry but that was more a stylistic choice. He would use prose, just normal conversation, and then when he wanted to heighten the emotions of a scene, he would switch to poetry. Come here, man. I see that thou art poor. Oh, there is 40 ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such mortal drugs I have. But Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so my poverty, but not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty and not thy will. Also, World War Z is an example of a novel made up entirely of short stories. It's also an example of a book where the only thing it has in common with its movie is the title. The only book that comes to mind that did this was a romance I read several years back and it stuck out for exactly this reason. I tried to look it up. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Probably didn't help that I didn't remember the author or the name of the book or anything about it. Little details. Little details. But I do remember that the protagonist, uh, he was a man who I think he developed a crush on one of his students and he was a writer, he was a poet, and a lot of his inner monologue was in haikus. And it was played to comedic effect. So when he would be, be thinking about the situation, you got to find all the words that rhyme with inappropriate. It wasn't particularly well done, but it was funny. It was the first thing I thought of when I heard this question. Four, where do you picture publishing in 10 years? So right now in the publishing industry, there are huge changes going on. And I think this is going to be continuing. I think in the next 10 years, we're going to be seeing the same thing with publishing that we saw in the last 10 years with television, how we consume television, where we get our television from. 10 years ago, it was mostly TV. 
and now you get so many different options with streaming you get so many small companies that are getting into the market and are making big waves in the market and it's changing not only where you pay to get your TV but it's changing the sort of product that we're consuming Netflix right now is doing series where suddenly you're not constrained by the half hour or one hour marks of a network television schedule suddenly you can market to a very specific demographic that maybe you wouldn't have been able to reach before and we're getting a lot more experimentation in the sorts of shows that we're being presented with a lot is being thrown out there to see what sticks so in the publishing industry in the next 10 years I foresee a lot more self publishing happening and I and I foresee a lot more small publishers which would be effectively self publishers who are uh, representing other authors that would basically be one author who's familiar with the process and has gotten pretty good at it and has a decent list taking on other clients and taking a cut of that profit just like a regular traditional publisher would we're already starting to see some of the ripple effects of this uh, the romance industry has been self-published for years it's been dominated by self-published because they can produce so much more quickly under the self-publishing model and they can respond to customer demands much more quickly enlighten me then and then there's niche markets and niche markets are really where a self publisher can make some serious money because in traditional publishing there's a certain threshold of sales that you have to anticipate because it takes money to produce a book even lowballing it's going to take about six grand to get everything you need to make a book in the traditional publishing world and that's lowballing but because a self publisher can produce that same book for a much lower budget they can write to a niche market which doesn't have as much expected revenue so for instance steampunk is a growing niche specifically because of self publishing steampunk wasn't very popular for a while but there was always a cult following because you know steampunk is cool but producing a book for steampunk in the traditional publishing model you're probably not going to make your money back there just aren't enough customers but a self publisher can still make money in a small niche because they have a lower barrier to entry as far as financials go and steampunk as a genre is growing specifically because of the self publishing industry and because now there's something to consume and it's attracting new customers so I think we're going to start seeing more and more of this sort of thing and it's a very exciting time to be in publishing specifically self-publishing and I am really fascinated to watch this evolution and see where it goes question five if you could have one booktuber review your work who would it be ah yes so there is a booktuber and I would go total fangirl if they reviewed my book and the really cool thing is they have agreed to review the last dragon princess they have a copy in their house uh, it's been sent to them so I'm not going to say who it was I don't want to call them out because they haven't actually reviewed it yet and I don't um, want to jinx it and I'm playing the pronoun game here but uh, this booktuber in addition to having a very impressive sub count I've been following this individual for a while and I have really come to respect their opinions on storytelling and on the totality of a work and what works and what doesn't their views don't exactly line up with mine their preferences and genres uh, but for the most part they really do they're tough but fair and their reviews are always very well thought out and they always say specifically what worked very well what could have used more work what didn't work um, and I've come to respect their opinion a lot and I'm I would go total fangirl if they reviewed my book <laughs> hi guys future me here so in between filming this video and now uh, this review has come out so the channel's name is crimson rogue and the reviewers name is Kyle Martin and I have linked the review in the description below please when you're done with this video go check it out I am so excited so yeah
go check it out. So thanks. Bye bye. Number six, writers' quarrels are the things of legend. What author alive today would you want to spat? Okay, so here's the thing. If I don't like a book by an author, I tend to just not pick up another book by that author. I guess if I had to choose uh, something along these lines, I'd go with Jana Aston. She's a contemporary romance author, and her debut novel, Wrong, is one of my favorite contemporary romance novels. It's so funny. It's just this cringy humor, and it was so much fun, and there was this spark. You could tell she had so much fun writing this, and it was a joy to read. I'm not saying there weren't significant problems with the characters, there were issues, but it was fun. I had so much fun with this book. It's still one of my favorite books. And for very good reasons, this book took off. It was very popular there for a while. It did very well commercially. But then her later books, pretty much every book after this book, it was very formulaic. It didn't have that spark. At least not to me. I mean, the books still do well commercially, so, you know, maybe it's my problem. So I'd probably just bitch at her about that a little bit. I'm thinking I might not be so good at the spat thing. Number seven, have you ever been part of a writer's group? I was lucky enough to work with some wonderful uh, critique partners and beta readers when I was writing The Last Dragon Princess and getting it ready for publication, but I've never had an in-person writer's group where you you know, you meet on a day of the week or the month and you swap stuff and you, you know, critique other people uh, and you get your own work critique. I've never had that experience. I would like to. Unfortunately, I'm one of these people who has the best of intentions, but I just can't quite commit to the time. <laughs> I do a lot of beta reading and a lot of critiquing uh, for other writers, and I, I try to be very active in that because it's it's such a valuable thing. It really is. And also, outside of AuthorTube and BookTube, I don't think I know anyone, you know, physically in my geographic area who also writes. So that might be an issue as far as in-person writers groups. Number eight, do you have a favorite writer's craft book? I don't know if I would call it a favorite writer's craft book. Um, it's one of the few I own. And this is The Little English Handbook by Corbett and Finkel. This was uh, a book that I had to buy for my English 101 college course. And uh, it, it sits by my computer desk and I can flip through it and, you know, I'm looking for verb forms, I'm looking for grammatical, you know, brush ups, that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's really good for that. So it's my most used. I don't know if it's my favorite. Number eight, do you have a least favorite writer's craft book? No. You know, when I was preparing for these questions, I was trying to think of all the writer's craft books I've read. And in truth, I can't name very many. I was thinking about mentioning uh, The Hero's Journey or The Virgin's Promise, but then it occurred to me I haven't actually read these books. <laughs> I've researched these books. I've read blogs on these books. I've looked at the summaries of these books but it turns out I'm just too cheap to buy these books cheap finally a word I understood number 10 tag people so I'm going to tag Megan Tennant over at Cloud Kitten Chronicles because she's just gone through a big move and a big job change and so therefore she doesn't have enough on her plate so there you go Megan you're welcome why did you do that not for money if that's what you're thinking your heartfelt gratitude's plenty. Expect I'll be getting that any moment. I'm also going to tag Moon Petrie, Robinson Castello, and Clay Francisco from Clay the Author. And all of these links are in the description below. So what were your thoughts on any of these questions? Talk to me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And until then, bye-bye. Ah, uh, but I did uh, get my coffee here. Number eight, do you have a least fright? Bleh. I am so excited and I'm just so grateful and I, ah, so I, I don't know if that's a spat or not.